Hey guys, my name is Devontae and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. Initially, this video was going to be a commentary video and I thought about it. I really want to break down some of these points that I'm actually mentioning because I was actually like at least a good six minutes into recording this video and I was like, you know what? There's a lot of things that I feel like I should probably be dedicating time to to kind of get my thoughts out there a little bit more clearly, a little bit more coherently. And I, th and I said to myself, you know what, let's not make this a commentary video in the sense of like just, you know, making it kind of like a essay format. But let's let's make this a top five video because I want to kind of detail some of these points out more directly for you guys so you can understand where I'm coming from. And if you feel like you have any type of reasoning as to why you disagree with it, you can point it out and we can talk about it. Now, like always, do me a favor again, again, again. I'm not against free speech. I'm not going to touch your comment. I'm just asking. Be respectful. Please do not put timestamps down in the comment section below. I really want the engagement to be a part of this process and I really want you guys to see my points thoroughly. And if you want to skim through the video, by all rights go ahead and do it but do not point do not post time sentence down in the comment section below please 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 do me a favor again i'm not going to touch your comment but just do me this big solid do not post time stems down in the comment section below and i'll start this off by saying this before i continue on i'll actually i'll point i'll put a timestamp so you guys get you know can get directly into the timestamp uh into the actual video and stuff but before i continue with the actual countdown and stuff, I do want to say something really, really quick, because I really thought to myself, are there some positive things I could say about the profession? Because I like to always kind of balance it off. I'm going to actually go on a negative rant and actually, you know, chew you out. I always want to give at least something positive about you, something charitable about you and vice versa. If I'm going to go on a complete tirade about how fucking awesome you are, then I at least want to point out, OK, well, understand. I don't agree with this. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with this. I like to do that. And I honestly can't think of anything positive with the professional wrestlers today outside of the fact that they're young and they still have ways to go when it comes to learning. But I feel as if that's kind of a backhand compliment, if you will. Not to mention overall, I mean, is your age really something worth complimenting about? I mean, it just happens to be a part of you. It's just the process of life. You can't do anything about that. Whether you're retarded or whether you're a genius, you're going to grow and you're going to age. That's just the process of being an adult, being life, a kid, whatever the case may be. But I do want to say this, though, and it's going to be relatively negative. Actually, it's negative. It's talking about the professional wrestling fans overall, especially within the IWC. I hate this talking. I hate this concept. And I mentioned this a couple of years ago where people want to say, for an example, a certain talent should be elevated and a certain talent should be putting over other talents just because it's like the way of wrestling when it comes to veterans talking about younger superstars. And then. At least for me, I always thought that was such a retarded concept to say like, hey, you know, this guy should get put over because he happens to be a young talent. I made a whole video about that a couple of years ago, and I still hold on to those same sentiments. It's a dumb reason, and it's not worth talking about. It's not worth reasoning with when someone likes to tell you the only good thing about this wrestler is that they wrestle really well, just like everybody else in professional wrestling nowadays, because it seems as if people forget that we live in an era where this is the best in-ring action of all time. And if you were to look at the worst match of professional wrestling today, it'd probably be the best match about 30 years ago. But talking about something that kind of differentiates itself for that position, people like to always mention age, 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 age. This guy should go over because he's a young talent. This guy should go over because he's an old talent. And I think that's the biggest cop out in the world because it doesn't matter to me at the end of the day. Either that guy is really, really good, who's young and he's talented and he's worth getting put over. And that old veteran is starting to lose their touch and they're not as athletic as they used to be. They're not as good on the stick as they used to be. And that's worth a reason or you just don't do it at all. The whole reciprocal notion of most wrestling fans to each other in regards to discussing about wrestlers being young and old, it's just always been such a non-talking non point for me. You're just saying it in order to, I don't want to say virtue signal, because that's not even the correct terminology I want to say. I feel as if you're just saying it just to justify your own perspective that you feel you have to have in order to be within the IWC if you're of that niche, um, um, that niche um, type of ideology, if you will. And that just never really sat well with me. Ed, age is a complete fucking cop out because in the end of the day, no matter what you want to tell me, I would much rather, and I don't like the guy at all, but see, I'm being good faith about this. I would much rather see something involving someone like a CM Punk who's almost 45 years old. If not 45, I think he is 45 years old. I could be mistaken. I would rather see something involving CM Punk than seeing something involving Austin Aries or Austin Theory, excuse me. And CM Punk damn near doubles him in age. I mean, would you guys rather see Austin Theory versus CM Punk? 
I think the fuck not. So please, age means nothing to me. But with that being said, let's jump directly into the countdown with number five. Young wrestlers today are incredibly reckless. And here's the thing. I don't mind the reckless behavior if it's actually worth a damn, if you're actually doing it when it actually is called for. And it's not to say that even some older wrestlers are incredibly reckless in the ring. Whether you have someone like Sting damn near paralyzing themselves on multiple occasions, or someone like Ric Flair who probably needs a dialysis machine to walk around, yet he's inside the ring bleeding all over the goddamn place. Look. I get it. In the end of the day, you want to go out there and you want to separate yourself from the crowd. You want to go out there and you want to make sure that whatever you do that night is going to be remembered. And I completely sympathize with that notion. But at the same time, if I actually, for some rare reason, grow an attachment to you, I would like to see you grow in the business. You know, I would like to see what you can do later on in life in the business. And who knows, maybe you can have a legacy and a legendary career that would make me put you on a pedestal where I could compare you to some of the other dumb fucking wrestlers in the future. But when you go out there and you do reckless shit for the sake of doing reckless shit when in reality no one's going to remember anything about your stupid ass match, I have a problem with that. Take for an example our most recent dumb reckless stupid ass spot match and that would probably be the Saturday show at um, what was it, Full Gear with uh, Hangman, Page, and Swerve Strickland. I like that match, but like most people said who actually like that match also, I mean, you have people who hate the match, you have people who like the match, and I think the total consensus that we can all agree on is that these two had a really, really retarded match in the sense of them doing ridiculous stuff. I respect and I appreciate the fact that at the very least, the substance behind it actually makes sense when you take into context the setting, and at the very least, not all the way, but the feud and itself at least somewhat warrants it in comparison to your other backstage wrestling matches or your other stupid backyard wrestling matches or CZW matches matches or GCW matches, they actually did something worth a damn and they actually got paid with something other than mustard on their hot dog and maybe a little bit of relish. They actually got paid money and exposure and they actually did something to Source Strickland's career. I will say at least looking at it so far about four or five days later. Now with that being said, was any of it necessary? Was any of it really necessary? Never mind what you feel about the storyline. I mean really think about the shit that they did in that match. And, and and I understand if their whole premise was we want to do stuff just to be remembered for. OK, I get that. I understand that. But at the same time, were there other creative ways that you could have done something in order to not hurt yourself, to put yourself into a predicament where you can still be remembered while still getting over there in the match? I mean, isn't that a part of your profession? Isn't a whole part of your profession? And I like to quote someone like a Jim Cornette is to go out there and because, you know, it's professional wrestling and the whole point of professional wrestling is to fake it till you make it. Point being is you go out there and you fake wrestle to make people believe that is real versus going out there and having a real match when people actually know it's fake. You, you know, like, what are we doing here in the end of the day? And I see a bunch of young wrestlers who are actually following this reckless type of mindset and this stupid ass mentality with this ridiculous behavior. Wrestlers like MJF, who put people on announcement tables and they collapse underneath them. So rather than actually just following through with the next spot inside the ring, that's a little bit more safer and a little bit more credible. Instead, he gets in the turnbuckle and he does a fucking flying elbow drop on the floor with no padding for the most part, completely fucking up his hip and most likely his shoulder. Other wrestlers putting themselves in predicament in situations like this all the time. I can go down a laundry list of wrestlers who are currently injured at the moment because of the shit that they do to themselves inside the ring and having absolutely no balance or no reasoning as to why they actually did it. Even some slightly older wrestlers like John Moxley put himself into a position when he wrestled against Ray Phoenix, got a concussion, and rather than actually staying down for the pinfall, actually said, Ray Phoenix put me up for the same spot you just gave me a concussion worth. Things like that of that nature. Wrestlers today are incredibly reckless, and I say, well, young wrestlers in particular, because the older wrestlers use a little bit more common sense. Not to say that all of them are that way. Look at someone like a Mick Foley, for an example. But at the very, very, very least, I will say this. As stupid as Mick Foley was in his career and the price that he's currently paying at the moment, at the very least, you can say that he was one unique wrestler who didn't really, at the very least, have competition in regards to who the fuck is going to outdo the other in stupidity. So whether it was reckless or not, it wasn't necessarily an influence on his fellow compadres, if you know what I mean. Now, granted, he most likely influenced the generation, but there's a complete difference between the generation now seeing what Mick Foley has actually paid the price for doing the things that he did to his body versus his actual co-workers following up with what the fuck he was doing. You get what I'm saying? Big difference. But yeah, young wrestlers today, 
Darby Allen, you're a big proponent of this also. Um, you're you're complete idiots, and um, I can never really see myself investing into your character when your main focal point in regards to me investing in your character is doing insanely, ridiculously dumb shit that's going to make me not want to be invested in your character when eventually you're taken off a of TV, most likely put into a grave, most likely incinerated when you go into a cremation chamber, and I can no longer invest in a dead fucking wrestler, you stupid fucking idiots. Number four is exposing the business. Now, kind of relative to what I just talked about beforehand as far as the wrestlers going out there and making a mockery of the business by doing stupid shit when professional wrestling fans already know it's fake, the way they usually try to get over nowadays also outside of the dumb shit they do in the ring, again, as I noted before, wrestling fans knowing that it's fake, yet you want to make it seem so fucking real and you're a complete and utter jackass, just wait and see. You say to yourself, oh, Devontae, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Okay, come back to me about 10. Not even going to say 20. 10 more years, maybe even five, and let's see who the fuck is the real idiot here, right? Exposing the business. Now, you have people who go on the microphone and they shoot from the hip, brother. They like to say things that are relatable to the wrestling fan who circles around on the internet. They like to say things that are relatable to people like me who make content out of the stupid shit that they do in the ring or out of the ring or on the microphone in particular. That's one thing. It's already stupid. I feel as if you have to do it to cover up for your, you know, lack thereof when it comes to your creativity as far as staying on point with the actual fake story at hand to get people invested into that because it takes way too much work. Actually having to go out there and not expose the business takes way too much work. So rather than do that, you much rather go on, not just the microphone, but you rather go to people like Dave Meltzer, Sean Ross Sapp, Ryan Satin, Raj Geary, and you expose the business. You tell them a bunch of fucking things that are currently going on in your said storyline or inside said match, and you expose everything about it. And now there's no longer the mystery. The magician hand has now been revealed. And that's a huge problem because not only is it just your profession that you're currently ruining at the moment for other wrestlers who probably would like to make more money in this business outside of what they're now obligated to make based off of their contract, but also for the wrestling fan, which is the most important part because fuck the wrestlers, because I'm the more important. I'm you, me, him, they, she, they, it, their, they, zer. We're all important at the end of the day, and we matter way more than the wrestlers because the wrestlers at the end of the day, they're rich, and we're not. You probably are, so I hate you also. But my point being is though, when you do things to expose the business, it's no different than a spoiler. In fact, that is exactly what a spoiler is. To say things about the actual finale or the ending or whatever criteria you want to use as far as whatever position in said storyline or inside said arc or inside said week's promotion or whatever the case may be, you're revealing for me to see you reveal and now I no longer have any intention to want to watch any bullshit in regards to your match or your overall feud going forward. How do you not see this as a problem is a big headache to me and it was back in the days where you would have wrestlers and people may look at this as caveman times and they say to themselves holy shit these Nimrods, these goddamn Neanderthals bashing themselves in the brains and killing other wrestling fans to prove that the business isn't fake. You may say to yourself that's such a fucking passe people are so past their time and thinking like like that but then they forget that in the end of the day they're in the pro wrestling profession and those kind of rules apply specifically for the pro wrestling profession and you have to go out of your way to really 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 expand your morality when talking about these certain things but that's okay because otherwise why are you invested into this criteria more so this actual profession that we call professional wrestling nowadays why i say criteria i have no clue i'm trying to use big words trying to sound smart and it's fucking failing miserably right now but let's continue on why would you go out of your way to expose the business and why do you get upset in the end of the day after exposing the business at us fans who say to ourselves, hey, what's going on? Hey, is this real? Hey, is this true? You would think that most young wrestlers, they would try to keep themselves in the check and police each other. But instead, they actually go out of their way to play into the nonsense, to play into the madness, and sometimes even go out of their way to add to the madness. So whose fault is it really? It's the young wrestler's fault. Because like I said, back in the days, you go to Vader or someone along that ilk and you say, hey, professional wrestling is fake. Or, hey, I heard this news about your fucking character. Or, hey, I heard Dave Meltzer say some nonsense about this, yada, 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 yada. And you say that to an actual pro wrestler's face. You know what they do? They will punch you in your shit. And you may say it to yourself, that's completely abhorrent. 
holy fuck, you're going completely over the edge. Holy fuck, Devonta, your mentality, you're fucking retarded. And that's perfectly fine. But guess what? I'm retarded with the knowledge and the excitement that I had about professional wrestling when I was younger. And here you are bitching and moaning along with me as the professional wrestlers have done what they've done to the business. And you yourself can understand that what I'm talking about right now, as far as this point is considered, has been one of the contributing factors as to why you hate professional wrestling nowadays and why you're jealous as to why of my excitement in regards to how I felt about professional wrestling about 10 to 20 years ago. Hmm, I know, right? See how that works? Ah, uh, number three, arguably my favorite point of the video. Why? Because it makes up mostly my entire perspective when in regards to the credibility of my channel. Why? Because I talk about this point many times in many reviews and in many commentary videos. The laziness. Now you may be asking yourselves, Devante, if this is your favorite point, why isn't it number one? Well, to that I'd like to say, SHUT THE FUCK UP AND WAIT YOU DUMBASS BITCH! Sorry about that. If you want to, you can skim through the video. Number two and number one are up there. Just please don't leave any timestamps. Thank you very much. Now, where do I begin with the laziness point? Do I want to go to, say, the promos? Mm, not really. You can kind of, like, reverse the video back. You can kind of get my entire consensus when, in regards to the promos. Do I want to talk about the swagger and the attitude of the wrestlers? Nah, pretty evident. You see how most of these assholes carry themselves. In reality, when it comes to the laziness, the number one thing that I like to talk about is the wrestling. Did you not hear me allude to that point earlier on in the video? Pay a fucking attention. When you go out there and all you can actually do is flips, dives, kicks, punches, and you know, other kung fu jujitsu bullshit, and you're not really focused on other aspects, it gets boring really, really quick. Because people forget nowadays that the whole point of you actually going out there to wrestle is supposed to be a tool to give a conclusion and a climax in the beginning to why this story even exists to begin with. Now, most wrestlers today like to use the wrestling as the beginning, as the climax, as the conclusion without any story in between. And most wrestlers today like to actually make an argument that the story in itself happens to be in the ring. Like I touched on last night from my, uh, what was it, my Dynamite review? I think it was my Dynamite review. Yeah, that was last night, right? Yeah. Sorry, Thursday. Yes, Thursday. Okay, I'm not ready. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, like I talked about my Dynamite review last night, most wrestling fans like to give up this kind of deflection, kind of run defense for some of the wrestlers, and I like to allude to the fact that the, today's wrestling, you have to understand that the story in itself is this two-week arc that they touched on here and there for the better part of two years, for what, like two years? Look at Kenny Omega and fucking Hangman Adam Page. They were off and on for two years, barely doing anything throughout the entire night, and we're supposed to buy that as a story. And my favorite part, hey, do you not understand the story of this match? It's this guy versus this guy, and who's the best? Yay! Because totally, that's not the characteristics of the character in itself. We're going to say that's the actual story. Shout out to you, Solid Monster, you crackhead. But you know what? That's fine. You know what? That's your opinion. That's your prerogatives. Now, see, for me, when I talk about a story, I like to look at something along the lines of a novel. I like to look at something along the lines of chapters. Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 3, Chapter 4, and so on. And there are different elements inside each chapter to kind of progress the story, but the entire main idea of the story is what those chapters are progressing. And there are actual elements and dynamics and different type of arcs and different type of characteristics and hell even character development overall that progresses said story we don't get that in professional wrestling nowadays unfortunately what we get are the other things i discussed earlier on in regards to the internet in regards to the actual shoot from the hip brother promos in regards to the actual going out there and killing each other in order to get stuff over and people would rather go out of their way and do most of those things than you know actually promote the character and put stuff into context and you know actually give an actual fucking hearty hard try as far as actually cultivating a gimmick that's why i have so much respect for tony storm currently at the moment for a little you know faux va folk fuck fake let's say fake i'm too stupid to know what words actually mean that ends with the letter x fake melon monroe gimmick i actually appreciate that because it's not actually trying to take heed and you know try to go into the fucking fallacy and the lame ass you know acknowledgement of hey wrestling fans i acknowledge your premise in regards to how you look at character and how you look at story see i'm wearing a different knee pad this week so go ahead and dig deep and think of your own fucking creative story in your mind as to why this has meaning whatsoever. 
No, she didn't do that. Instead, she just full on took on a gimmick, and that gimmick is what she's going to embody going forward. It seems like most professional wrestlers nowadays don't want to do that. You had someone like a Jungle Boy a couple of years ago. He was on the podcast, and he made note of the fact that he didn't want to do promos because he was too afraid. You're a pro wrestler, buddy. Your dad is also a fucking superstar, a celebrity. He's literally a fucking actor, okay? Literally, his only characteristic, his only characteristic to get a job in order to act was to be, you know, charismatic, or as the kids like to say nowadays, have that riz, boyo. And if you can't be that, and if you can't go out of your way to put yourself into a position to be that, and you feel that professional wrestling is literally just the wrestling portion because you're a dumb fuck, and you like to take things at face value and then use that as a way to actually cultivate whatever type of ideology or meaning you have towards your professional wrestling, you're a lazy piece of shit, and you should be out of the fucking business. Some may say that's harsh, some may say that's dramatic, and some may say that's drastic, but let me ask you guys a question. If you happen to be a manager at, say, a Burger King or a McDonald's or a Wendy's or whatever fucking fast food restaurant that's later on gonna kill you from diabetes and heart congestion just like your parents don't worry i stalk you i know all your information don't ask how let me ask you a question if you were a manager for any of these restaurants and one person only knew how to work the fry station or one person only knew how to work the register or one person only knew how to work the fryer would you want to actually give that person hours versus another person who knows how to do all three things and can actually work cohesively with his other co-workers and kind of roundabout way and do all three things i think the fuck not so let's use a little bit of logic when pertaining to professional wrestling. If all you want to do is go out there and work as far as your in-ring action, and even vice versa, someone like an LA Knight for an example. If all you want to go out there and actually do is cut promos rather than actually go out there and put on a good performance that's actually credible and makes me want to watch your boring ass matches no longer be boring, then, you know, pick one or the other. That's fine. But understand, I think you're a lazy piece of shit. And then, you know, you should probably get out of the wrestling business. Because there are more people who can probably do more than you, and uh, they're just not being represented, you know. And unfortunately, that's usually the young wrestlers not named MJF who like to take that route. And even with MJF, sometimes he kind of like leans on certain things in order to get his promo skills to mean more than what they actually is. But I'd rather take that than someone who outright refuses to talk on the microphone like gay ass Perry. With that being said, let's continue on with the next spot. Number two, I spit in the face of people who don't want to be cool. The bars, or maybe not, but that's okay. It's 2023. I'll just be your stereotypical rapper and I'll force a rhyme and make millions of dollars fooling you into believing that I'm actually fucking rapping. That's okay. <sighs> the losers, the dorks, the geeks, the, uh, uh, let's say, uh, L7s, uh, the it's not hip to be squared crowd. I mean, you have some of these men with the testosterone imbalance of a Jeffree Star, James Charles, and Little Nas X Bukaki threesome. These men, if you even want to call them that, weaklings, physiques, none there, six packs looking like negative six packs. And then you have the women out here, not sexy at all. Some of them looking like dykes, looking like bulldaggers, going out there with your guts hanging now and pretending to yourself that, hey, I can do what I want. You can't criticize me. Why? Because I'm a woman. And for anything that you're going to say to me, understand that it's misogyny. Even though I totally just flamed the guys just now, I don't care. It's all about me. It's all about the power. I get it, though. I understand the end of the day. But what I don't understand is why can't you at least turn that to make you look somewhat cool? Make it somewhat fashionable. Make it so I don't have to fucking turn my TV because you're going to bore me to shit with your awesome five-star classic matches and your, and your great shooting from the hip promo, brother. Like, why, why can't you go out there and you can actually make me want to, you know, be invested into whatever you're trying to put across to me on the television? And then they always have to go on television, or not even television, well, sometimes television too, but more so like on social media. They have to post their little anime outfits. You know, they have to play the little video games. And, you know, nothing wrong with that. I personally like anime. I like video games, but that's why I'm a fucking plebe. You're on television. The only reason why you're on television is because, you know, I can't be. Why? Because you're supposed to be the larger than life star. You know, you're supposed to be the larger than life character. You're supposed to be the person where I'm supposed to be looking up to to do dumb shit in real life and get arrested for. Isn't that how it is to be a child? And even for some people, man children, you know, looking at you, my little pony bros. Like, 
I don't understand why most people in professional wrestling today can differentiate themselves as far as taking something from pop culture, embracing that, and then using it. Like I talked about before with Tony Storm, but more so in kind of like a, you know, very cool light. You know, someone like The Rock, he's a cool motherfucker. Why? Because Rock had Versace shades on. He had his $500 shirts, his Gucci pants, his alligator shoes. He had his necklace. He looked like a Cuban drug dealer. And that was cool. That's why I like The Rock. When I grew up, I wanted to be a Pablo Escobar. Even though he's probably not Cuban, but that's okay. Let's keep up with the metaphor because I'm on a fucking roll right now and no one's gonna fucking stop me. Remember Scott Hall? Reza Ramon, another, another Cuban drug dealer? At least that made sense, even though he's not Cuban also. Okay, these metaphors aren't working. What I want them to do, though, was just do something that's like pop culture trending. Something that, like, you know, maybe will embrace the era for what it really was outside of what the hell they brought to the table, even from a story standpoint. Something that I can actually look at and I say to myself, wow, I want to actually talk about this amongst the roller, amongst the water cooler people. I want to actually go to work and people are going to be talking about this subject, this wrestler, this storyline, whatever the case may be around the water cooler, even though that is kind of passe because do do workplaces even have water coolers anymore? Most people have fountains nowadays. The fountain of you, the fountain of you. What the fuck am I talking about? Oh yeah, number two. Wait, what was number two again? Uncool. Oh yeah, that's right. Yo, you see these wrestlers nowadays and all you can actually say to yourself is, wow, I would love to give you a wedgie. Wow, you look like you could fit really in my locker room. Right now, I want to really practice my personal swirlies. That's the kind of thing that I get when I look at these wrestlers. Don't I don't get really the energy from them that kind of screams. <gasps> oh my God, he's so awesome. I'm not even gay, but I'm gonna faint. Oh. And then, you know, you get the girls, wow, look at that ass. That's such a beautiful ass. She has a Yath Queen ass. You know, stuff that makes you even question your own sexuality because how cool they are. Not me, because I'm straight as fuck, I promise you. I went to I went to the LGB Pride Parade and I was like, no siree, Bob, that's not for me. I only looked, I only looked back twice and I had to question whether or not I wanted to go back, but I left eventually. It speaks to my own straight my straightness as a man I'm, I'm a straight man i promise you don't 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 under you, you, you don't get okay you're, you're you're too young you're too young you're you're too young don't ask questions okay seriously though these wrestlers tell me you guys tell me right now on the top of your head who's the coolest wrestler today is it badass becky lynch walking around like she's a peg leg pirate i'm the man arg <laughs> is it la knight yeah, 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 yeah. The last rest who said yeah a lot couldn't breathe and passed away. Too dark? Who gives a fuck? I don't care. Maybe it's MJF going around talking about being a Jew because totally today's society, look at the date. It's totally cool to be a Jew, right? Look at the date. You see that YouTube? Look at the fucking date. Look at the date. Why is he playing this music? I don't want to hear your shitty music. Drive along. See, he's got to see. I'm, I'm recording this in my car right now. There's some guy passing by with some shitty music right now. That's how uncool professional wrestling is. When you're playing shitty ass reggaeton. Seriously, what is with reggaeton having the same beat over and over again? What is that? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm losing my mind right now. Yeah, but wrestlers today, uncool. Number two, it sucks. Be cooler. Okay, admittedly, I was a little bit unhinged in that last one, okay? That's fine. That's okay. Okay, ignore that. Ignore that. We're going to get serious right now because number one, is absolutely something that's been plaguing the professional wrestling business for the longest when it comes to these young wrestlers. Number one is something that's really been on my mind for the longest when it comes to these young wrestlers. Number one is the reason why it's so hard to be engaged with these young wrestlers and the product as a whole today that they, you know, infest because that's what they are. They're parasites that suck off. They leech off. They are parasites. They're like a baby to a leftist when it comes to an abortion. They just suck everything fucking dry from the business that I love, and yet they never give back. Sorry, again, I said I was going to be unhinged. Okay, focusing on the lack of originality. That's... That's a huge problem in professional wrestling when it comes to the young wrestlers today. I feel like that's the number one thing because even with all the things that we talk about, we talk about the laziness, the recklessness, the coolness. It was one more spot, but I can't remember it, and I'm not going to go back to go see what it was. Actually, yes, I am. I'm lying. Uh, always exposing the business. There we go. Uh, I, I can really get around all of that if there was some type of originality behind it. Because here's the thing. You look at someone like, say, for an example, I don't know. Let's say, thinking to myself right now, let's say CM Punk, right? 
CM Punk in 2011, all the shit that went down. You may say to yourself, oh, it was a rehash from 2005 ROH. That's fine. Shut the fuck up. What I mean is the actual story in itself, right? It was CM Punk's baby, and he used it again in WWE to the fullest, you know, exponential bearings of its ability, right? That's what CM Punk did in WWE in 2011. And everything that I pretty much talked about right now kind of extends to 2011 also, to a much lesser degree, mind you, but it's still there also. But I was willing to ignore all that because you had an angle that was actually creative. It was actually original. It has never been done before outside of ROH, but again, I told you to shut the fuck up about that. No one cares what you think. I'm a fascist and I'm your dictator and I told you to shut the fuck up. But that's what I miss in professional wrestling nowadays. That's what really makes the Attitude Era, the Attitude Era, the Hulkamania Era, the Hulkamania Era, and even to a lesser degree, the Ruthless Aggression Era, the Ruthless Aggression Era, and even to a lesser, lesser, lesser degree, the New Generation Era, was the originality. The originality, the things that people would don't, people don't recognize, people never even had a concept of, even if you were to take it from, say, the territories and just kind of like blow it out of proportions and make it your own, it was original. You know, it's kind of hard to call something a remix nowadays when you took like five different portions of the beat and then made it your own like it was back in the 90s versus today when you just outright take the fucking beat that those five parts made and just say, hey, I'm going to put different lyrics to it. I'm going to shanty the shit out of this shit. I'm going to baby, baby, baby this shit. Scarface, Mary, that doesn't exist. You know why? Because I switched the fucking lyrics. And that's my problem with professional wrestling nowadays. It seems as if the professional wrestlers nowadays don't understand what it means to be original. They don't understand what it means to not take a concept and like you know fucking ruin it or even worse take the entire concept as a whole and then use it as if it's brand spanking new because all i get in the end of the day it's not paying homage it's not even a remix what i look at it is as a fucking parody and parodies are fucking horrible when it comes to professional wrestlers because when they parody something they do it to the fucking ground and it fucking sucks need i remind you the upteen fucking time how many times we had a montreal screw job type of finish like no, I, I, I want originality in professional wrestlers when it comes to the young talent. And we don't get that nowadays. We had a lot of it during the, again, Attitude Era. Hence why people have such fond memories of it. Hence why the majority of the talent who got over during that time are remembered. Hence why you look at someone like an LA Knight. And even though he flips his words around here and there and his mannerisms kind of change a little tiny bit, his foundation is pretty fucking obviously rocking Austin. And you can highlight that even though he's not completely ripping them both off as far as like the entire gimmick from one person he could take sip he could take actual entities from each character and you could piece that together and see that he got it from rock and austin because it's easy to notate where he got that from because it's easy to earmark because those guys are actually fucking over and those guys are actually fucking original and those guys actually presented something fucking new and that's what I mean. When you talk about the originality, and which is why it's another reason why I make it number one, it's because when you talk about all the other things that fall underneath the originality belt, the two through five category, all that stems, all that happens, all that bad things, neglect, all whatever you want to call it, happens and it stems from the fact that the originality no longer exists in professional wrestling. You know what I mean? So like back in the days, let's just say back in the 1970s, you had something like, say, the Memphis days or whatever, hardcore wrestling, right? Remember the Lights Out match? Was that in Memphis? I, thought, I think that was in Memphis, right? The Lights Out match, for example, with what, Jerry Lawler and I want to say Terry Funk, although I could be wrong about the wrestlers involved in that. My point being is the things that they did, it was original. Original hardcore wrestling. Hardcore wrestling that made sense because hardcore wrestling was meant to be a fight, right? And then you have people who took it to the extreme. No pun intended, but people like ECW took it to the extreme. And there's no further you can go past that, but you have wrestlers who would take that and rather than, you know, rather than take it and like separate it into its own subgenre at the very least, if you're going to do something with it, they just become more extreme with it, right? And then you get to a point where people are now hitting each other over the head with fucking glass light tubes and shit like that and the same thing can be extended to wwe you know you take shit from roh as far as their identity focused on strictly the wrestling which by the way they took shit from new japan pro wrestling like i said they took they were like the original rap song that remixed everything they took shit from europe they took shit from japan they took shit from mexico they wrapped it all up into one they made the main focus wrestling that was roh right and then someone like a wwe takes it puts it on their nxt brand and they make everything wrestling but it's like a lighter version of what roh did back in 
2002 to 2007 for an example right and then you know wwe main roster sees that and then the people from nxt come to the main roster and then they make that the focal point and then aew sees and they say to themselves we're gonna outdo the remix of the fucking remix right and you just get this convoluted bullshit where now you know it's the safe route to go because today people are so overly sensitive when it comes to actual subject matters that you can easily get some cool characters out of some cool stories out of people are super over sensitive and they're going to pretend that they actually care but in reality they're nowhere near offended to that point and it harms the originality because now all you can do is wrestle you know and eventually that becomes super duper boring and because to a point sometimes when you have wrestlers you have wrestling fans excuse me who are like 22 23 years old and they're seeing the angle and they're losing their shit over it and you're just like what the fuck is such a big deal i was watching this for like 24 7 back in 2000 2001 2002 1989 1998 hell maybe even 1991 for an example it's like fuck i was watching this long before any of this shit happened i mean look at the perfect i'm saying 1991 like in 1992 right look at the shit that's happening with fucking remember the whole storyline with um uh, what's his name with uh, Bret Hart and British Bulldog and you know you don't, have to, you don't have to say British Bulldog and Bret Hart I was going to say British Bulldog and Bret Hart as far as the stories ripping up you know the family ripping apart what are you doing dating the family and all this other stuff you know like you don't even have to go that fucking far actually let's take that back for a second go look at Bret and Owen you know and people are fucking man I love what they're doing currently with fucking Dominic Mysterio or Rey Mysterio I love the angle too but people are like this is one of the best story times of all time oh my god that's the best storyline of all time like dude they were doing angles like this fucking 30 years ago bro like we're what what are you well I want to say anything I can't say you are living under a rock because you know everybody's living under a rock when looking at professional wrestling nowadays even the goddamn wrestlers and it seems that these professional wrestlers young ones in particular today they don't get that and you know maybe some of them do get it maybe some of them are historians but what they do in the end of the day is kind of repeat the same thing over and over and over and over again and some of the times it gets diluted and some of the times they just flat out fuck it up and you know there's only so many times you can see the same angle over and over and over again before you look at it and say to yourself do you have anything else to bring to the table right it's like the whole fucking superhero movie genre it's like how many times can you fucking take batman and superman and make them face each other right whatever man but that's gonna do it for the top five list do you feel as if that i should probably touch on other things do you feel there are some other terrible things that the young wrestlers bring to the table that pretty much hurt professional wrestling overall that's okay if you want to bring it up you can talk about it amongst each other i still like you anyways even though you're gonna make me look fucking stupid when you bring it up and i say to myself god damn it i forgot i should have made that a fucking point but i'm still gonna love you okay i'm gonna love you as much as your abusive dad loves you which is a lot a lot a lot I'm not inviting you out to a fight if you bring up this point, but I should probably post my address and, you know, we can get some coffee together. You may see me with brass knuckles, but, you know, I'm just, just me showing off to my best friend who proved me wrong in the comment session. I love you still, though. As always, my name is Devante, and, uh, yeah, let me get the fuck up out of here as always. Again, talk some on each other in the comment session below. As always, deuces, P, eyes.